Hello everyone, welcome to Tarot and Oracle for the Soul. This week I will be doing a VR2 tarot readings from a bitch. What is the hashtag? I don't remember, but I know it has to do with getting to know you as a tarot reader, as a tarot tuber, and it's kind of in response to all the drama, so people can kind of get to know if they want to follow you or not, watch your videos, all that. I thought it was a great tag. I liked her description. First question is, what is your tarot experience? On my original channel, Smart Reiki and Tarot or Sarah's Prismatic Musings, it's either my first video I ever posted on that channel or my second. I talk about my tarot experience. I will link that up above, but I actually got into spirituality this path of uh, exploring tarot and reiki and hypnosis back in 2007. i've been into astrology and numerology and basically astrology and numerology for a lot longer probably since i was like 13 14 years old i was always kind of drawn to that but being raised and indoctrinated in Christianity and Catholicism, a lot of this stuff scared me. So it wasn't until I was in my mid-20s that I started really investigating and going deeper. I loved Reiki. Reiki was my first love. It's still my first love. Tarot came second and tarot was actually not what I wanted to learn. But with Reiki, my Reiki master teacher, Diane Gelinas. She worked for hospice and she was a hospice nurse and she had Dorian Virtue cards and I loved playing with the Oracle cards. I really wanted to take her class on angel reading and I picked up this kit. It's funny because it came with a DVD. <laughs> I had this deck for 15 years. Never watched the DVD but I really enjoyed working with Doreen Virtue's Oracle. Um, this was actually my first deck I bought. I probably, I worked at Borders Books and Music in the cafe from the time I was 18 until I was about, I think I was 28. I worked there off and on um, for probably about a decade. It was one of my jobs. You know, at that time, even though I had a college degree, at one point I was working, I think like four part-time jobs. Yeah, good times, good times. I feel like every generation has to go through that. You have to work three, four part-time jobs or a full-time job and two part-time jobs, whatever. I was working for part-time jobs and that was one of my part-time jobs. My favorite job, I loved the supervisor, the general manager. I loved the community there. Like. I'm so sad that Borders is gone. I helped set up the Borders in Holyoke, Massachusetts. So we got a free t-shirt. Dude, that t-shirt is holy and it's ripping and I, I won't throw it out. I love, love, love Borders. Like just so many fond memories. It was so cool because we got to experiment with making different espresso drinks and we got to check out books and we were given books as rewards and um, of course we got discounts. So I'm pretty sure I bought this deck there. I could be wrong. I used to go to a store in, I think it was in, yeah, Concord, New Hampshire called Pachamama. I might have bought it there, but you know, this is back in the mid to late 2000s, so different time, different world back then. I love this deck, and like I said, I wanted to learn how to do angel readings. I wasn't interested in tarot until my Reiki teacher, Diane, she was very into lineage. She taught Yusui Reiki. Uh, she mapped out like her lineage to Yusui, so she was all about it, and it took me, I think it was an hour and a half drive. So mind you, I'm working three, four part-time jobs. I'm not making much money. I'm living with my parents at the time and I'm driving, you know, to pay for these classes. I'm driving at night, which it's fine. In my early twenties and my, well, even through my thirties, like I had so much energy that it's okay. I could work like 
all day and then be out all night so it wasn't a big deal like that but it was just the fact of paying for gas anyway anyway i'm getting off topic to get my reiki masters from her i would have had to not only take the class and then mentor with her which would have been fine but i had to take like 10 other classes that she offered and some of them it's like you know i already studied those things on my own so i felt kind of resentful i'm like i've already done this and she's like i don't care you have to take the class so it's like well that's more money out of my pocket i'm paying you know I'm willing to pay the $300 for your Reiki master class and now I have to pay $100 plus gas. So anyway, long story short, I found a Reiki teacher who did not require me to do all these other classes on top of Reiki to get my masters. So this other teacher, she was in town, she was in the town. So actually, sorry, I wasn't living with my parents at this point, this is a couple years, you know, after Reiki one. Um, so fast forward a couple years, I'm living in another town with my husband at the time. And we find, me and my best friend find this woman. She was at this moon market, a fall festival in Vermont. And we decided to take Reiki three with her. And it was kind of like weekly, but for me, it was no big deal because I lived in the town. I literally could walk to her place. And she was supposed to be teaching us Reiki. However, she didn't just teach us Reiki. She was teaching us how to work with crystals and gemstones. She was having us read books on the occult, especially she was all about Aleister Crowley. She was telling us stuff about, you know, Aleister Crowley's vision for the new Aeon. I was watching um, Amanda Ellis's video about transgender and like how in the new earth, gender won't be so, there won't be so much polarity. And I remember Ali telling us that it's going to be more like gender fluid, like, and so I, and I was like, oh yeah, I remember being told that. I remember that that was gonna happen. I just didn't realize that it was gonna be so kind of like violent until we get there. Like. I don't really like how both sides are so violent. Like, anyway, that's a whole nother topic. I don't want to get into that, but it just reminded me. Anyway, so she wasn't just teaching us Reiki and she wasn't going to just pass on the attunement. It was all this other stuff and Crowley. And I was, you know, only a few years into Reiki and this, but like working with angels is not like too foreign being a confirmed Catholic, you know? work with the angels and pray to the saints and pray the rosary so it's like that wasn't so scary for me but talking about Aleister Crowley that scared the shit out of me long story short I didn't even get my attunement from her and that was just it was a mess but we learned tarot and so she wanted us to get the Thoth but I ended up buying this and I'm actually really happy there's a book that comes with this and it's awesome and it came with this journal but you could see that there's some, I wasn't very good with journaling in this, but I have other, I usually use notebooks. You have this little cheat sheet here, which I've never really used, but it's cool because it compares the Crawley and the um, Rider Waite Smith. And then it came with both decks. So the Thoth was actually my first deck that, I learned on because this is what she taught. She wanted us to learn the thought, but this is really confronting and really scary. So I put this away because it scared me. And I picked up my own deck a few years later. This is Lisa Hunt's Animal Divine. It's out of print now, but I love animals and animals are not scary and it's just a very gentle deck it came with a great guidebook i have it somewhere um when i do a full flip through i'll show that but once i picked up this deck i was like oh yeah this artwork i love lisa hunt's artwork i think it's beautiful i love the spider the hanged woman is the spider woman so I was like, yeah, this is cool. This is fun. And 
my best friend at the time, Kate and I, we would play with the tarot and give each other readings and we would always, you know, give each other Reiki and it was just such a fun, like, even though it's really just her and me, she's my community. She's my sister. She's my family and I love her to death and she's a moderator on my other channel when I go live because we basically started getting into all of this stuff at the same time and... Um, yeah, she's my sister and, um, her son is my godson and, um, he's amazing and has so much to teach me and the world and definitely a child of the new, the new earth and he's just an amazing artist and just such an amazing person and yeah I'm just very very proud of him and being his godmother just means a lot to me so this is the deck that really kicked off my love for tarot I really didn't buy a lot of decks it was that kit and this for a long time and then I discovered the Spiral Tarot, and that was kind of my deck for a long time as well. And then I went back to the Thoth, and um, I have a deeper new appreciation for the Thoth. But that is my experience with reading Tarot. I've been reading for about 15 years, and mainly that was for myself and for my best friends. And I'm not very good about journaling every day or pulling a card every day, but I've gotten better. I've gotten better, except this past week, I did not do a meditation or journal or tarot for about six days, which that's the longest streak. It's usually a day here or a day there that I miss now, but I'm going to be gentle on myself. Why do I review decks? I review decks because I love to collect and I just love to collect everything. When I was young I would collect books and then in clothes and shoes and as an adult I still love to collect books and now tarot cards and gemstones not so much shoes or clothes but those things I really really love so I feel like it's just part of my personality unfortunately I get a little obsessive like I can't stop thinking about something and I feel like I have to buy it. Like I have to get it right now. If I don't, like I'll just die. It's it's bad. I have to work on that. I am working on that because it's not healthy. And I see that my nephew gets the same way. Like he gets a little obsessive. Like he can't stop talking about it, thinking about it. He needs it. He doesn't feel okay. He doesn't. The anxiety doesn't go down until he gets it. So I collect because I have a spending problem. And I review decks because I've been watching Tarot 2 probably since 2017. And the reason I didn't start a channel back then is because I didn't feel like I had enough decks. I really, I think I had like maybe four or five with Oracle included decks. I had my Thoth, Rite of Weight, the Animals Divine by Lisa Hunt that I just showed you, the Spiral Tarot, and the Angel Oracle. And that was it. I think about 2017 when I was watching all these VRs and flip throughs, that's when I started getting FOMO and then I was decide decided to start collecting. And by watching all of these um, videos, I decided that I really loved the silent flip throughs because I don't really care about why somebody loves it because unless it's, you know, about the cardstock, the card quality, the size, Either the artwork's gonna vibe with you or not. And I would say it took me a while, let's see, 2017. I'd say it took me about five years to figure out what I f really works for me. Um, so now I can finally be kind of like, that's okay, that's great that it works for them, but it doesn't work for me. So on this channel, why I do silent flip throughs is because that's what I prefer watching. I don't care about the run through of what you find so great about it, no offense y'all. No offense. I think that's great if maybe if you're new and you haven't really started collecting or you haven't started like getting into it and you can have a YouTube channel without collecting decks, but that pressure is really there to have like 
50 decks because how do you do a VR if you have like five decks? So I get it. And that's what really prevented me from starting my YouTube channel because I'm like, well, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna say? What am I gonna talk about? I only have like five decks. That's gonna get boring really quick. So I waited until 2019 once my collection was up. How did you get into reviewing decks? So in 2019, I just was like, it's time, you know, I've been collecting now for a few years and I've been doing Reiki and hypnosis for a long time and I needed like a hobby and I wanted to kind of share my experiences and my knowledge and I'm like, I think it's awesome that there's people out there who have just learned tarot or just taught themselves or took an online class and jump right into it. I'm not like that. I feel like I have to always, I'm a Gemini, so I feel like I have to read more, know more, that I won't ever know enough. I I feel like what I do know isn't good enough. It's not worthwhile. That what I know, everybody knows. And I'm just barely learning that that's not true. That's not true at all. And that I need to really change that mentality. I just, I guess that comes from maybe being raised by very strict authoritative parents that I feel like I'm not enough, like that I would never be enough. So it took me until 2019, it took me until I was 38 years old to feel like, no, you know what, that's wrong. That's not the correct thinking. Like, sure, I have plenty to share and this will be fun and a new community. I was working in a new age shop and I was like, you know what? I'm ready, I'm ready. So that's how that happened. Do you receive any decks for review? Okay, short answer is no. I've had to pay for all my decks. I'm a very, very small channel, both of my channels. However, on Instagram, Kate Matthews, I was following her. I love her artwork. I think, I don't know if she was posting her artwork or if I just went to her website. I'm not sure, but somehow I ended up on her actual website. And I saw that she was taking email like requests from creator, uh, not creators, but like influencers, reviewers. Um, and you could email her and she would send you a copy to review. So this is the one and only deck that I have received for free and on my main channel I reviewed it and I think I'm I think I clearly state that this was given to me for free to review. And yes, it, you know it's super exciting to receive a deck for free. It's super exciting to be like, yay, you know, this is so cool. And to feel that gratitude. But I mean, I wouldn't have asked to get this deck for free if I did not already know Kate Matthews artwork. And if I did not know that I like the artwork. So, I mean, does that mean I'm biased? I don't know. I probably am biased and that's why, you know, you're supposed to state whether it was for free or not like that should be stated. And I even question, am I supposed to mark the box that this is paid promotion? I mean, I did not get paid. It's not like she sent me money. She sent me a copy for free. So does that constitute being paid? I don't know, I debated and wrestled back and forth and had a really hard time with that. Do I hit the paid promotion? I did not receive money, I received the deck. So I don't know, I don't know what the legal ease is. I'm not an attorney, I tried to read through and do research and I can tell you it's just too confusing and I'm too emotional about it and my logical brain just won't kick in. I will say that now that I've worked with it, I love the artwork, okay? And I like the cardstock. I know some people think it's too flimsy. I like my cards thinner rather than thicker. This deck is great for reading for yourself. You know, a lot of times people can't read for themselves because you're too close. This deck is perfect for reading for yourself. I love reading for myself because there it is. I can't use this for professional psychic readings because 
it shuts off my right brain, the creativity. And I see this, you know, if they're asking about love or money, I just, it's like, well, what else do you want me to say? It's right there. So even though Deborah Zakawa says this is great, so you don't burn yourself out, you don't get tired, I don't agree because it shuts down my intuition, my psychic side. But I, the book is amazing too, you guys. This book, I love this book. The book is great and Deborah really knows her stuff. You know, you can tell that she's a professional reader. And Kate Matthews, her artwork is amazing. So I'm still gonna sing the praises of this deck even though I can't use this professionally. And anyway, most people on tarot tube are not professional readers and that's fine. You don't have to do tarot to even be a professional. I mean, it took me 14 years to decide after learning and using tarot for myself that I wanted to share it and to do this professionally. So I still love this deck. I love the artwork. I really like using this for myself, for reading for myself. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. I mean, let's be honest, don't you think that most of us who started Tarot Tube were like, yeah, let's get some free swag? You see other big influencers getting free stuff. Why not you? Why not me, right? So anyway, <laughs> let's not kid ourselves. And I mean, if that's the only free deck I ever get, that's fine. So be it. I'm still going to buy my own decks and I'm still going to do reviews. So what kind of reader are you? I use numerology and I use color theory and I'm an intuitive reader. Like I just know things. I've always been that way. I'm the type of person that I'll be out in public and a stranger will come up to me and just start telling me their life story. Usually the stranger will not just tell me their life story, but then they'll start asking me questions. When I first moved to Phoenix, I did not have my own transportation. I took public transportation and I would be at the bus stop and every day it was something else. It was a different question. I had one woman come up to me and be like, you look like somebody who has a college education. Can you help me out? I have some questions about college. I answered her questions. I've been told really sad stories about women who have, who were basically sold off into marriage at a really young age and have 12 kids and crying, telling me that, that they feel stuck. They can't get away from their abuser. My best friend, when I first met her, she told me basically all her trauma. This was back in middle school. So this has been my whole life. People will just tell me everything. I've always been the one that people come to for advice, for support. I minored in psychology in college. Of course, going on the spiritual path, I found out that I'm highly sensitive, like super, super sensitive, and I'm, I'm an empath. So I absorb everyone's energy. People just feel safe with me. I am like a sphinx. You can tell me your secret and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna reveal it to anyone. So I felt like with my gifts, like these are my gifts, obviously, that I just used to do for free. Whether I wanted to or not. Obviously, I've worked on boundaries. And being a professional tarot reader, this is now part of my boundaries is if you want to like word vomit all over me and ask for advice, let's have an exchange, an energy exchange, which it's taken me a long time. It felt really hard for me to want to charge for that exchange because I was so used to giving that exchange away for free. And I'm not saying to not, you know, that if somebody came up to me and asked me for advice, I would probably still give them advice and I would still probably listen because that's just who I am. But I'm just saying that I need to start valuing my time as well. All right. So yes, long answer short, I'm psychic, intuitive, highly sensitive empath who just knows things. I know when somebody's lying to me. I know when somebody's telling me the truth. I'm a human lie detector. It made me very good at my job. I would try not to use it and at one point I, I did turn it off because it was just too much and I just felt like it wasn't really fair. And trying to get 
get it turned back on. Like it's turned back on, but man, when I was younger, it was just, but then again, I didn't have any boundaries. So maybe that was why it felt more intense. It felt different. What kind of decks do you gravitate toward? Okay, so the decks I gravitate toward are going to be kind of like Halloween themed, fun, playful, or like bright and colorful. Like I really love all these decks that I have out because they're either colorful or kind of like Halloween based, but I need a deck. It can't just be colorful or Halloween themed. It needs to have a good book like this, the Boo Tarot book. It's, it's great. This is a really great book, especially for an indie. And I know that some people complained about the cardstock on this. I don't care that it bows. I love this. I love how playful it is. I love that there's like some pops of holographic. I also have a cute and creepy deck that I love. I'm not very articulate about what I like, but I know what I like. I guess kind of like whimsical, playful decks that are colorful. I don't like black and white decks. I have one black and white deck. And honestly, I bought it because I love the book. It was Aaron Morgenstein's The Night Circus Tarot. And I love the book. And I know black, white, and red was the theme. And that's how the cards are. I bought that deck and I did kind of like a first impressions walkthrough of it. Or did I just do a flip through? I don't remember. But um, I haven't used it and I don't know if I will. I bought it because I just, I love that book. But um, I should have been honest with myself. I don't like black and white. I like playful, fun, Halloween, kind of weird decks, rainbows, colors, you know, things like this fairies, animals, witchy, but I kind of, I'm at my limit of witch decks. It, it's kind of like the key term for a while there. And I'm kind of like over that. I like when they're based on the Rider weight system and they kind of stick to that. That works for me. I don't like when a deck like totally veers off that Rider weight Smith system. And I have to learn how that deck speaks to your subconscious. I like the way that the Rider Waite Smith cards read, like tell a story, it's cohesive. I love that the Thoth is near and dear to my heart because it's so deep, but um, sometimes you don't want something so deep. And I feel like since I've learned that one, I, I don't wanna spend time learning a whole new system. Um, I know most people learn the Rider Waite Smith first and then learn the thought I was reversed. Um, but yeah, even in my Oracle cards, this is um, We Love and Crystals. I think this is Feelings in Bloom. I just, I like colorful decks, Oracle decks. Um, so yeah, and these are just, they're so beautiful. You don't need a book. It just says vulnerable. I establish healthy boundaries. Look at that. See, I was talking about <clears throat> boundaries and there it is. Um, and I, I'm definitely feeling blocked right now. And I'm yearning to have a successful YouTube channel, a successful tarot business. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. So, yeah. I need a deck that's gonna tell a picture. I, I I can't do abstract. I can't do like a whole new system. I don't wanna learn a new system. You know, maybe down the road, I'll wanna learn a new, a new system, which I do. I, you know, I take it back. I do wanna learn a new system. I wanna learn the Lenormand and I wanna learn the Kipper. I feel like it would help deepen my practice. So I do, I wanna learn those new systems. So what am I talking about? What do I like in a deck? Okay. So I like brightly colored decks with scenes and images that tell a story. I prefer decks with a great guidebook and beautiful or weird art. So yeah, that's <laughs> these decks. Love them. Some of my favorites right here. And as you can see, it's a mix of mass market and ND. 
because I do collect both, but I do mainly read with the mass market professionally. But honestly, I do have this on rotation. I read professionally with this deck too. The next question is, what do you not love in a deck? Um, these are just a couple examples of the decks that I don't like the cardstock. This deck was huge on Tarot 2 when it came out. I bought it because of Tarot 2. I hate how thick this deck is. This is stupid thick. It's hard to hold in my hand to shovel. Like, I can. When I first got it, the thickness totally turned me off. I'm like, why does it need to be so thick? Ugh, I hate it. Um, the images are fine, you know, I, the, that's why I bought it, because I liked the images, um, but I just don't like the card stock, so, because I don't like the card stock, I just don't use it. Uh, another example of a deck I don't like, this is an indie deck, I bought this off of Etsy, and I'm so so, so sorry. I did not watch any reviews on Tarot 2. Tarot 2 did not make me buy this. I just thought it sounded cool and I liked that it was called the Prism Tarot and I liked the colors. And this was before I figured out I don't like just having the numero numerological sign and the astrological sign. My brain shuts down. I don't like how abstract this is. Uh, at least it's not just colors you know there i thought it would be enough that i'd be able to read with this i cannot it is too basic and it's too confusing and literally my brain shuts down i've had this deck for maybe a year or two i don't love it i don't use it is it beautiful yes but i kind of feel like sorry liz landis i apologize i feel like it's kind of lazy I feel like it's kind of lazy art. I feel like it's kind of, it was a good idea, but I don't think it was fully executed. It's just not my jam. I can't read with it for myself or for others. So I keep it around because while it was an expensive Etsy deck, and I really want it to work for me. I really, really do. So I keep hoping that maybe I can come back to this in the future and it will click and I'll love this deck. But I really don't think I've heard anyone else give it good reviews. So yeah, if you come across this deck on Etsy, I don't recommend it unless you love abstract and it gets your creative juices flowing then awesome good for you like i wish that were the case for me and it just sucks that that's just the nature of the reality of collecting tarot and getting involved in tarot tube is that it's going to take some time when you start collecting to figure out what you really like i wish i just knew i wish i knew what i liked and Unfortunately, I'm just very influenced. I bought the Tarot of the Vampires by, I think it's Ian Daniels, because Tarot Tube talked it up. It was way too dark of a deck, and I'm really not into vampires, so why the hell did I buy that deck? I don't know. Luckily, I gave it to the guy I was dating at the time. We're married now, so, well, what's his is mine, and what's mine is his. So he uses the deck, and I have the book, because he doesn't use the book. He likes apps. <laughs> He's a tech guy. So he downloaded the book and he uses that. And I have the book. I have started reading it, but we'll see. I don't know. I'm gonna read it at while well, I'm at Strega tomorrow. So what do you not care about in a deck? I don't care what the packaging is. Now, if you go old school, like my teacher Allie, she would say take these out of the box and just put it in a pouch. So I can tell what decks were OG decks because I don't have the box anymore. I don't have the box for the Lisa Hunt deck, which I really wish I did now because I keep everything in the box. I just like storing it better. But the OG way is that you take it out of the box. So, you know, it's kind of cool that V just puts everything in a bag already for you. So there's like less waste. In a way, that would be great if even mass market retailers could 
do that, but it would be kind of messy. I know they can't really get rid of the packaging even though it would cut down on waste. Cause I know a lot of people like Chanel makes her own crocheted little bags and a lot of people do that and I love that. I tried to learn to crochet. I sat down a couple times this year and tried and I'm, I'm not a patient person. I don't know if I've mentioned to y'all, but I'm a Gemini and if I don't pick something up like, like that, I'm on to the next thing. I don't like sitting through the uncomfortable part of like getting used to something. Like either I'm good at it or I'm not. And if I'm not good at it, then I don't want to do it. <laughs> so starting a business um, and, and you know, running a YouTube channel and things not quite working, but I feel like the YouTube channel, like it's picking up because I'm doing shorts and I'm going live and giving away stuff for free. People love free stuff. So that's helping. I'm kind of more encouraged now just like starting my tarot business has started out really strong and April was a really, 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 really rough month for me where I lost money. I didn't just not make money, I lost money. When all the other months up to that point, I was making money. So, you know, that's something I have to work on. That's, you know, I'm not very patient and, you know, I'm not necessarily very graceful or gentle with myself. I'm very hard on myself. Uh, my inner dialogue is horrendous anyway, like very, very critical of myself, not others, of myself. But anyway, that's a me problem. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed this and I've enjoyed hearing other people's responses and um, there's, there's some amazing tarot tubers out there. Like I said, I love watching Chanel's channel um, and I love, um, there's just so many people and tarot readings from a bitch, like just watching that video, it was awesome. Like I look forward to, you know, seeing more videos from her and there's just so many great people out there, but you know, differences in opinion and differences in experiences and differences in background is really, really cool and I think that we just all kind of have to like, and even me, like check our egos from time to time and realize like, it's not always all about us, right? Like if something doesn't work for you or if something's not for you or you can't do something, that's fine. But um, I totally get the sentiment of decks being overpriced and feeling like you're being taken advantage of. If I wanna allow myself to get into victim mentality, yeah, I can feel that way. Artists work really hard. My husband's an artist and He's creating a Lenoran deck and you know, he's being very cognizant of creating a deck that's like $25, $30 that he can sell for that price point. He's working really hard to get it to the lowest price point that he can where yeah, he still makes money, but that he's not like upcharging like 20, 30, 40, $50 because you know, he's a reader. He doesn't collect, he's a minimalist. <laughs> Poor him stuck with me. But you know, he's all about like quality and not being ripped off. You know, he's a he's a frugal guy himself. So I get that and I get that it's up to each individual artist to set what the price is. I also get that this is ego again, like we get jealous of big time tarot tubers who promote these stupid expensive decks that are like 70, 80, 90, 100 dollars, 150, whatever and they've gotten it for free. Yeah, that pisses me off too, I'm not gonna lie. And they don't sit there and tell you and then they say that they, they their links, right, down below, they don't even say their affiliate links, they say they may be affiliate links. Yeah, that triggers me, for sure, for sure. It also triggers me when large YouTubers say like, hey, boycott channels that use knockoff decks. That's not cool. That's bullying. If you don't want to feature enough cough decks in your playlist, don't do that. That's that's totally your right. But to call your army of fans or followers or whatever and have them like blacklist people, that sucks. That's bullying. That's bullying. Even if you're not like calling out people like individually, like individual channels, that sucks, you know? I can admit I have been given counterfeit decks and I didn't realize I was given counterfeit decks. I didn't realize they were counterfeit. I don't go out and buy counterfeit decks and I don't condone that 
Um, and I think the PSA was great, you know, for knowledge. But I just, I don't like bullying. I don't like bullying in the community. And everybody has a right to their own opinion. And you have the right to say what you want to say within means, obviously. Um, and you have the right to run your channel however you want and include whoever's videos you want. But when you start calling your fans, your 15,000 fans, to say boycott, you know, these channels that are probably a fraction of the size, I think that's kind of like, that's kind of shit, man. That's kind of like really, I don't like that. That triggered me. I think that's bullying and I think it's uncalled for. And I think that certain people who have a lot of followers and are making money off of YouTube and getting decks for free maybe do need to check their privilege and do need to check. They kind of need a little like be brought back down to earth a little bit. Be humble, y'all. Like be humble, okay? I'm working on being a lot more authentic. I know that people want to hear more about me. That's really something that's difficult for me. I am not an open book. I am not. <laughs> so this is new territory for me to not just like do a flip through about the cards or to talk about my background or talk about my experience. So I'm working on that. I'm working on being vulnerable and kind of sharing my life. And I think it is important to stay humble and it's important to realize that there's differences in a, an opinion and differences in thoughts and different ways to read and that's okay that's totally cool like i think that's a beautiful thing when it's not beautiful is when people start attacking other people or bullying people or egos get like inflamed i don't like that that triggers me i want to see more softness in the world and i want to see more kindness and I know I come across the way I speak, like pretty aggressive, even though I'm highly sensitive. People are like, really, are you really? Yes, I speak like this because, well, the way I was brought up, like I was not allowed to be sensitive. I was told I was too sensitive. I was told to buck up, uh, you know, don't cry, don't, um, you don't show emotion. Crying is for weak people. Showing emotion is weak don't allow anyone to get the upper hand of you so don't show weakness basically like, like crying will get you like taken advantage of or whatever crying is a weakness showing emotion is weakness showing your vulnerability is weakness so that's not really me like at my core but being raised with these messages of you don't show emotion you don't show weakness you don't cry like all that bullshit is stuff I'm working through right now. So I'm working on being more vulnerable. So maybe it's my turn to get that free therapy that I used to give out. <laughs> and you all get to be my therapists. <laughs> so I appreciate you all. Thank you for taking your time to watch my videos. I really do like the tarot community. Even if I have moments of doubt and being like, I just, I don't like drama. I don't like fighting. I totally believe in live and let live. Like, as long as you're not like threatening people or affecting their livelihood or I think do you, you know? And yeah, have fun. So I'm gonna end on that. Have fun y'all and keep on shuffling.